So we give a big wave to Lucy and Rob on now about Jasmine. <laughs> give us your yeah, uh, your YouTube wave. Uh, <laughs> that was really lovely meeting um, Lucy and Rob on now about Jasmine. So Lucy does a blog and I will put a link to it in the description because sometimes it's really lovely just to sit and read a good blog like Lucy's. You know, to be able to get a feel of narrowboating. Yesterday we arrived at the beautiful Eckerton Bridge to moor up next to Narrowboat Solitude. And then today we are leaving our new neighbours on Narrowboat Jasmine because these moorings are 24 hours and this is the way of narrowboat life on a river in the summer. So we're trying to find a spot where we can moor our narrowboat and stay for a bit longer giving us the opportunity to climb Breeden Hill, which you can see on the map here. Okay, it looks like it might rain. In this vlog, I thought I'd show you how different narrowboat life is for us in the summer compared to the other seasons of the year very twisty and turny here. We are approaching an area called the Swan's Neck and that may well have to do with the way the river bends. It's a cosy little mooring spot. Even though Narrowboat Alice Grace is our year-round home, we change things up a bit in the summer so it really feels like a holiday. That is where we are aiming to climb at the top of that hill. Breeden Hill. So we're not going to be able to moor in that one. It's a lovely little mooring spot, isn't it though? Little mooring spot for one there. In August we have fewer work commitments, so we make good use of this and travel more. And we've decided this year to travel a lot on the River Avon. And even though this river is prone to flooding, in the summer it is less likely to flood. We've just seen a spot that we think we might be able to wild moor in. So let's have a look and see if we can wild moor our first wild mooring on the River Avon. Oops. We, we weren't looking, we were looking at the mooring spot. We also do a lot more wild mooring in the summer, just works out like that. And it seems this year we've been doing a lot more wild mooring in the rain. I'm going to try one more time. We're having difficulty in getting the boat in um, so the bow doesn't go across the river. So what we're going to do is we're going to reverse. We're going to try and poke the bow in front first. Um, it's just we're on a river and we're trying to reverse and you just that's the hardest bit, the currents really. So I've got the rope. Right. Okay. I think the real key to those jumps is to make sure you are adding the whoop noise. The 
great thing about wild mooring is you don't have any time restrictions like you do on the other moorings but we do check first to make sure we're not mooring on private land and we also check once we're on the mooring that you can get off by walking. And if the wind stays calm then these moorings are pretty straightforward. It's really beautiful. We were nice and securely pegged in. You can see the pegs there on either side. So we felt that it was a secure mooring. come down to get a drink. So pretty. It's quite pinky underneath. We're just about to leave. This wild mooring has been absolutely gorgeous. It really is lovely here. And we would stay for longer, we really would, but we have to get supplies. We don't have very much food, we are running low on water, we need to empty the rubbish. So we have to do a trip into Pershaw, which is a great place to stop, a great town to stop for supplies. However, we are going to come back. This is the thing, we, when you need supplies and you're running low on supplies, that's what you have to do. You have to move your boat to get to them. So. Um, and there's no way we can get a delivery here <laughs> from the uh, an online shop. I can't see a delivery driver being able to pull up right here. Having to do this because the ground's so hard that you can't get the peg out anymore. At last we're off to go and get supplies. Now normally in all the other seasons when we're not travelling like this I will order a week shop and we will be somewhere where it can be delivered. I'm off. This lock has a bridge in the middle and the boat was just in here so they kindly left it open for me. So what you need to do is you need to open the bridge before you set the lock. It says that here, uh, somewhere. Bridge must be open before entering the lock and closed after leaving. There we go. Nearly all the locks on the River Avon are named after benefactors who help to contribute to the restoration, either financially or by volunteering. So I'm guessing Nafford must have been one of those people. All tidy and packed away. But it's not as easy as that at this lock because you have to close the bridge behind you when you leave. You then have to wait on the other side and the river pushes you towards the weir. Where you are faced with an upside down boat that has obviously gone over the weir. Oh, that was really scary. Well, I hit the uh, big, great big inflatable weird thing is, that was something. Let me know if you've done that lot many times and you've got a special technique which side to go to when you come out and do the bridge. Day today. And we've just spotted this mooring spot. The blue posts tell us that it is a visitor mooring, so we think we're going to come back from Pershaw to here. Mm -hmm. 
Lock. Come on, lock dog. <laughs> this is a big reminder to read the instructions when you get to a lock because I'm unaware at the moment that there is a ground paddle in the middle of the lock and you're supposed to do that before you do the gate paddles. It's turning when nothing's happening. I know so why now. I'm just gonna shut this down. <laughs> I've got to do the ground paddle. Okay, let's go and read it. Fully open this paddle first. Allow lock to fill until the top gate paddles. Okay. Best we've done a lock so far since we've been on the River Avon. And apparently we've only got one mooring spot left according to the boat that's just gone in the lock. The waterways are always busier in the summer, but we've been surprised how quiet the River Avon has been. But here we are at Pershaw. Pershaw is a popular place and we are lucky that there's one spot left for us. partial we've got our things and supplies we've actually ended up staying here a couple of nights because i was editing the vlog um, but that's good that all works done so we're going to cruise back and we're going to do our special climb i can't wait we're going to do that tomorrow and then we went back back through partial lock back to the mooring spot that we had seen hoping that there will be a free space so that we could climb Breeden Hills. Just up ahead here, uh, just ahead there, you can see the blue post, a little boat there tucked in the corner. Look, there's room for us. Just seen the most beautiful fox just outside the window. You're not going to believe it. Come and have a look. We had made room for the lovely Derek and Pauline on the famous narrowboat Silver Fox. <laughs> Bye. Today's the day. <laughs> <laughs> Today's the day that Zephyr and I are going to climb Brugion Hill. The origins of this gorgeous village date back between the 7th and 9th century and the landscape here is described as champion which basically means large fields, few hedges and little timber.
Right, this is it. We're on the path now up to the hill. Look at the amount of fruit and plums on the trees around here. It's incredible. They're coming off in your hands so easily. So just going through the farm. The views are already incredible. I'm not halfway up there yet. So there's peach leaved bell flowers growing here. Wow, that is steep ahead of us. Here we go. We could do it, sir. <laughs> that last bit, I had to stop filming because I needed two hands. I couldn't hold the camera. Seth just whips up it. She's amazing. Oh, that was tough. I was on my hands and knees there. But look at the view. Isn't that spectacular? Oh, you're a good dog, Seth. Did you climb the hill? The summit of this hill used to be an Iron Age fort, dating back before the 1st century AD. It's also here that the largest hoard of Roman silver coins in Worcestershire was found in 2011. Evesham is six miles away. It's dropped up on the is where we're going. We're heading towards 18 miles away. We came from Birmingham. We were there in the winter. And on the Droit Wedge, if you remember, you're very welcome to go back and look at all those vlogs. They're really good. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. Anyway, there we go. It's this is the Breeden Hill, 299 meters. 209. And look, we did well because it took the Ramblers from 1935 to 1995 to get up there. So, Seth, we're better than the Ramblers. And this building is called Parsons Folly, which was built by Mr Parsons of Kemerton in the 18th century, bringing the hill to exactly 1,000 feet above sea level. I've just found red raspberry slime mould. Isn't that gorgeous? Growing out the log on the way back from walking the hill. This tree is 800 years old. 800 years old, isn't that beautiful? And what is amazing is it's really being celebrated here in the church because instead of hacking the branches that are overspilling the path, they've put posts to support them here. And so you walk under the branches of the 800 year old tree as you go along the path and it's almost like you're in its arms. That's brilliant.
summer's a river of willows, green clouds bulky and low, filling the sky with rustles that brush all the boats below. It's a hilltop of buzzes and plumbells, looking down on a palette of greens, seen as dragonflies swirl in dazzling gowns fit for queens. Summer's a web full and brimming, plucked by a satisfied soul, sat watching bats at their skimming in his silkily spun dinner bowl. It's busy, it's bustling, it's chipper, with sunsets rich citrus in hues, and whether I'm crew or I'm skipper, the summer's a great time to cruise. <laughs>